Good morning. Today is April 8, 2020. My name is Lilia and today's options lesson is on selling put options. Before I start today's lesson, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on my face at the bottom of the screen. It is free to subscribe. Selling put options is one of my favorite option strategies. When I sell a put option, I get paid up front while I wait for the price of my favorite stock to hit my target price. The target price is the price at which I am willing to pay for the stock. I select the options strike price based on my target price. Remember, the risk of put selling is something called assignment. Assignment means that I must buy 100 shares of the underlying stock at the strike price of my short put if the market price of the stock drops below my put's strike price. This means that my put option is in the money. Stock assignment happens only if your short put is in the money. A short put is a put option that you sold. With so many stocks and options out there, how do you select the right one? The first question you need to ask yourself is, which stocks or ETFs do I want to hold as long-term investments? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Which stocks or ETFs do I want to hold as long-term investments? As the saying goes, invest in what you know. If there are products that you like to buy on a regular basis, then you are already an expert about those companies and their products. You should never invest in companies that you do not understand. So that's the first question. Which companies do you use most often and love? The second question is, how much do you want to pay for a particular company's stock? You basically have three choices. You can sell out of the money puts on that stock, or you can sell at the money puts on that stock, or you can sell in the money puts on that stock. So which one is the correct thing to do? Let's take a look at the May 17, 2020 put options for Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO. Let's start out by looking at the one-year daily chart of Coke. Not too long ago, on February 21st, 2020, Coke hit a high of $60.13, and then it dropped down to $36.27 on March 23rd, and now two weeks later it is back up to $47.91. So we've had a little bit of volatility recently. This is obviously a great opportunity to buy the stock. But right now we're back up to 47. I'm using Coke because this is a stock that I would love to own as a long-term investment. So I'm gonna take you through the steps that I go through when I'm trying to decide what to do. The first thing that I do is look at a chart. And right now I can see that the slow stochastics is already back up in the overbought region. The implied volatility has come off the highs of March 18th. So these two things are telling me that right now is not the ideal time to be selling a put option because the put premiums are not as attractive. And I see a death cross right here which means that moving forward in the near future coke may come back down and then i'll have a better opportunity to sell some put options because the premiums will be a little more attractive the red line is the 50-day moving average we can see that the stock price is approaching the 50-day moving average which could be the near-term resistance. Resistance means that if the stock price hits this, it may 
go back down. And also, if it's oversold, I'm sorry, if it's overbought right now, there is a higher chance that the price could go back down. So sometimes, as an investor, you need to be patient and wait for a better time to sell puts. Or if you want to take a chance, you can jump in even though the timing isn't perfect. Before I start selling put options on a stock, I need to do some analysis about the stock itself. First thing I look for is the trading volume of the stock. And I'm looking for volume that is over a million shares daily. Coke has a really good daily trading volume. Today is over 12 million shares. The PE right now is 23, which is a little on the high side. It was certainly a lot better two weeks ago when the stock was trading at 37. Coca-Cola, the company, pays a quarterly dividend of 41 cents per share. So if I owned 100 shares of Coke, every quarter I'm going to receive $41 in dividends. And a dividend is simply cash that the company pays the investors. With this cash, if it's in your regular brokerage account, you could either take it out and spend it, or you can just automatically reinvest this cash and buy more shares of Coke. If you're holding the stock in an IRA and you're under age 59 and a half, then you cannot take out the dividends. You need to leave it in your account and you can leave it in there as cash or again, you can put it in a drip plan, which means that the broker will automatically reinvest the cash and buy more stock for you. Assuming that I paid today's price for Coke, my dividend yield is 3.2. 4-5%. If I pay less than $47 per share, then my dividend yield is of course a little bit higher than what's shown here. All investors who own Coca-Cola stock are going to get the same $0.41 cent dividend every quarter. However, every investor paid a different price for the stock. So every investor has a different dividend yield. Some people paid more to get the same 41 cents. Some people pay less to get the same 41 cents. When I'm selling put options, I always sell puts on companies that pay a dividend. Because if I get assigned, I'm going to be holding that stock for a while and I like to receive a little extra cash while I'm holding the stock. When I'm selling put options, I like to use puts that have an expiration date that's between 30 and 45 days out in the future. So today is April 8th, so let's take a look at the May 8 options chain and see what we have. Right away I can see that the May 8 options are a bad choice because on the bid side you see these weird premiums very low and on the S side these premiums are very high so that tells me that not a whole lot of people are trading these options and these prices are way too strange for my taste so I'm just going to skip the May 8 options and go directly to the May 15 options the May 15 options look a little bit better but now notice that the strike prices are $2.50 wide. Now that I've decided to use the May 15 options, the next question is, which of these puts do I want to sell? So, first question I need to ask myself is, how much do I really want to pay for the stock? And how badly do I want to own the stock? In order to answer those questions, we need to do a little bit of analysis with these premiums. Let's start out by looking at this option right there. Right now, Coke is trading at around $47. If I sell the $45 put option, 
there is a 36% chance that I may get assigned. I will also receive a dollar and 31 cent credit for this put. So let's do some math. If I get assigned at $45, but I received, it just shifted to 132, so I'll go ahead and use that price, 132. Then a true cost basis of my stock is 43.68. Put options in this region are called out of the money because the straight prices are below the current price of the stock. But let's suppose I sold that put instead, which is pretty much at the money. Notice, of course, that the premium is much higher and I've got a much higher chance of getting assigned the stock. So if I get assigned at 47.50, 47.50, but I received 217 for the option, the true cost basis of my stock is 45.33. And the last one is, what if I sell a put option that is already in the money? This put option has a strike price of $50. And notice that this premium is about three times higher than the $45 put option. And that, of course, is very attractive. The probability of getting assigned on this option is over 70%. So that's pretty high. So now let's do some math and see what the real cost basis is. So if I get assigned on the $50 put option, but I received $3.45 premium up front, my true cost basis is $46.55, which is about $1.22 higher than the cost basis of the at the money put option. Getting assigned at the $50 put still results in a cost basis that is lower than the price of today's stock, lower than today's stock price. Some of you may be thinking, if this put option is already in the money, then could I get assigned right away? And the answer is no, because if you look under the extrinsic column, that's the time value. The $50 option still has about a dollar and 30 cents of extrinsic or time value remaining. It is in the money by $2, so it has $2 of intrinsic value but it has a dollar and 30 cents extrinsic value remaining, which is still very high. So it is unlikely that I would get assigned right away. If Coke continues to rise for the next 37 days and closes above my straight price of $50, then I will have made $320. But I don't get to own the stock. So now let's go back to the question of which of these put options is better? Well, there's really no right answer to that because a lot of it really depends on what your goals are and how badly you want to own the stock. So for me, if I sort of want to own the stock but I'm not desperate, then I might consider selling this put option, which is out of the money, and if the stock price never drops down to $45, then I will have made $124. On the other hand, if I want to take a chance and really want to get the stock, then selling the put option with the $50 straight price might make sense. I do get a lovely premium, and if I get assigned, the cost basis of my stock is $46.55, which is acceptable. Then, of course, the happy medium 
is to simply sell a put option that's at the money. So you have a 50-50 chance of assignment and you still get a very lovely premium. After you've done the analysis and you're ready to push the button and sell a put option, all you need to do is click on the bid and then you select how much money you would like to receive. Right now, the $50 put option is trading between $325 and $335. The mid price is $335. So normally, I would like to just aim for the mid price, always using a limit order and a day order. That means if it doesn't fill by the end of today, this order is going to expire automatically. I never use a GTC order for an opening trade because I don't want this order to remain open and carry over to the next day because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If this trade does not fill today, I want it to expire so I can start over again from scratch the next day. Thank you for watching and remember to share the knowledge and spread the wealth.